director. He needs no introduction. He's known for so many films, Love Story, Betab, Arjun, Dakit, Anjam, Arjun Pandit, and Jo Bole Singh. Nehal. And he began his career as an assistant to Raj Kapoor. So he definitely has the inside scoop and tells all in his new book, Raj Kapoor, The Master at Work. So, sir, a very, very warm welcome. We're excited to learn about the icon. Thank you for having me. So, sir, tell us what makes Raj Kapoor and his films even survive till this day and we talk about. I think his cinema is... uh, Describes the word cinema in the true sense of it. The way he narrated his stories, the simplicity in his stories. Uh, He carried very simple stories. And he had uh, uh, a great uh, leaning towards having social content, some or the other. So I think down the road, that content still holds. And that's where it really brings in. And his... uh, his way of telling the story, his, his sense of visual narration, the visual narrative, I think is the strongest I've ever seen. And we're still learning from it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now let's do a little rapid fire that will help us learn a little bit about you yeah. and about him. So your favorite Raj Kapoor film where he has the lead role, the actor. You mean as a filmmaker or as the actor? As an actor. As an actor? Uh, Avara. Your favorite one as a director, as a filmmaker. Raj Kapoor as a filmmaker? Yes. Same yeah. role. Tell us one thing that we don't know about Raj Kapoor. If you read my book, The Master at Work, Raj Kapoor's Master at Work, there's lots of things in that which you know, which you don't know about probably. You know, it's, um, it's, it's different things. You know about Raj Kapoor's way of working, his technique of work, his uh, eccentricities, his uh, love for food. And so what was his favorite dish, sir? You have to tell us now you gave us he the would, teaser. He would eat anything at all. I've even seen him take a piece of bread and put uh, some butter into it in the pouch, put a jalebi in between like a sandwich and dip it into tomato ketchup and eat it. Wow. So, you know, he would eat anything. He would experiment in any way. Now, the era of larger-than-life films, are they making a comeback or are they over? No, they were always there. And larger-than-life is what cinema will finally be about because now with so many different viewing platforms, you know, you could have cinema, you could have the mobile, you could be on an OTT. So, um, but larger-than-life films will stay. And uh, I think uh, we've seen it in the past and we're seeing it now also. Uh, so that's, that's there. I think the, um, the charm of cinema, you know, having larger than life stuff is part of that charm. I think Raj Kapoor started it all with uh, Avara, yeah. which was huge, you know. Like he said, I, it was so big because a poor man, when he dreamed, he would dream big. Even so when I, we dream, we want to dream we, big. We all dream big. <laughs> so I think that some, you know, summed up what he Now, one film that you think that he made that can be substantially improved. Can be substantially? Improved. Can be made better. I See, I'm a, a, a firm believer that whatever the masters have made, cannot be improved and neither should we even attempt to improve them. Oh, that kills my next question because I was going to ask you, which film should we remake no, and who would you it, want? We should not, any one of the masters, whether it's Raj Kapoor or Bimal Roy or Kiasif or Mehboob Saab or Goldie Saab from the older lot. If you talk about contemporaries, we talk about films of like Sole, you know, or Subhash Gai's films. You know, you or even the more recent, you talk about um, Surat Bajatia. Yes. The films cannot be remade because what they made, you know, is something that we can't do again. No, but it there is a lot of lot of people would love to see kind of like the new aftar of it. Anyone that you would like to see in a new aftar also. Exactly. You know, you talk about it as a classic. 
if i were to make it again i i i don't think i'd be able to come up to that standard you know if you told me make avara again or make uh, mughal azam again or make bandni again not possible or huh? make johnny mera naam again you know or make amar akbar anthony you know be possible yeah. <laughs> you know these are all this is all the work of the masters which um, of course there's one story which uh, has been made 27 times uh, into a film and i'm one of them who made that film uh, that's uh, william shakespeare's taming of the shrew but that always happens right the classics keep getting adapted to yeah, generations it, see, it's it's the classic no. it's the basic thread of taming of the shrew it's not taming of the shrew being made as it is um mehboob saab did that in arm all right um, then there was uh, films of uh, ali bhai i think manchali with sanjeev kumar had was came of the shoe then there were two films with shashi uncle with shashi kapoor which it came of the shoe there was betab which was came of the shoe so uh, jungli was came of the shoe so it was the basic concept that's all which is picked up and they made a new film is just an and i think today's time i would love to do a, you know a version a story a love story um, keeping a small tale of the show in the background and of course but i like to do the love story the way it was great music is what i mean that's like <laughs> fantabulous <laughs> not only great music fantabulous <laughs> music so tell us you also mentioned this that in in his movies he used to bring out a social aspect you know so talk a little bit about that especially the role of women and his thoughts on that because if you ask me i think he was one of the early crusaders for women you know uh, he respected women a lot and he felt that they have always got a wrong view so uh, his women characters were very well defined in his films whereas uh, mainly our films never had a woman defined very well very few films are there where they were defined or they had something to do uh, so that's the one i think um, he believed in romance romance was something which he brought in i mean when he made a film like jagdish van ganga bethi which was a decoy film <clears throat> but for him it was a romantic film all right it was his romance with padmini ji that and uh, he had uh, prans up playing uh, Raka, the, the main villain, but he had plans of singing a song also. You know, he had you know, so that was the kind of entertainment he believed in. And um, you know, he said, "Why can't a poet sing a song?" And you will see films like Ram Tari Apna, this this one is not bad. Yeah, there is no action in it. Yes, it's all concentrated on the woman. Uh, Sangam was a great example of. Uh, the woman being the centrifugal force in the in the film and how she's torn between these two worlds and uh, what i liked about that was that he never preached that the woman was wrong you know i think somebody would normally say the woman was wrong with one of the two characters but here you felt for the woman because even though she never loved rajkumar when he went away to the war and news came that he died is when she fell in love with rinder kumar and then that's who came back and so it was it was the beauty it was uh, no but the they also of, dealt with a lot of complex issues in a very beautiful way you know sir yeah and uh, look uh, prem rogue was one of those uh, films again where he dealt with this uh, widow remarriage kind of thing and uh, it was very complex uh, Film to me, but he did it. Bobby also. Uh, Bobby did not have a problem of the parents objecting to the marriage because of religion. You know, normally I feel that somebody making Bobby Christian uh, granddaughter, uh, Hindu uh, father would have some kind of religion. No, Bobby had nothing to do with religion. It was not even the. I would love to see that remake too. <laughs> you know, it, was, it was not even uh, 
the class because um, Premnath was as rich as uh, France of course. It was just the upbringing that, that which made a difference for the characters. No, very, very interesting. So because he was, as you said, such a great storyteller, and you have also been such a great storyteller. Tell us what makes a great story. Because today, you know, we are trying and everybody is trying with one minute and whatever to tell a story. <laughs> I wish I knew what the great story. I really wish I knew. There's something nobody knows what the great story. And um, then the other difficult thing is when you read a story and when you want to translate it on screen, that requires a lot of... Uh, a lot of guts to do it the right way, which uh, happens or doesn't happen. But um, I wish I knew what's the right story. Yeah, no, because we are all loving to learn what lessons also that we can learn from Raj Kapoor. What would you say those are the two, three big things that you'd like people to know? Yes, I'd like them to know uh, how he got his inspiration for making films. And it was not just limited to making films. Even the inspiration for the banner of RK, you know, the, the famous banner of RK, which was from a still of Parsat, where uh, he's holding uh, Nargisji with that violin. But again, that pose which he came was inspired by a painting. Okay. Right? So that's all there. It's, you know, it's. Um, See, inspiration is something we all live with. Inspiration is something which goes down the line. So it's the inspiration, more importantly, how do you interpret that inspiration? I think that's important. You also got to learn from Raj Kapoor what he, how he felt music played a big hand in him. And, uh, you know, how he actually... I mean, films without music are just not, you know... Yeah, but, uh, but he uses music very, very well. Yeah. And it was one thing which he... Uh, I think the greatest lesson which he learned is... Which he taught, uh, taught me this was... Always believe in what your heart says. Okay. If your heart says something is right, it's right. Don't go against what your heart says. Which I think is very... So as you've, you've been in this industry for such a long time, and now you're seeing the emergence of OTT and everything. So do you see a big shift in the way that movies, dramas, everything is being made today? I, I'm waiting to see that shift. It's not happening. You know, here people are treating the OTT as though it's, okay, if I don't get into a film, I get into the OTT. It's not that, you know. I feel these are different formats. You know, you've got to decide, are you making a film for the screen? Or are you making a film for the OTT? Or are you making a film just for uh, the television screen? Or is it going to come on to the mobile also? You know, so that's uh, where the difference is going to be. In fact, I was in Cannes uh, three years back and I'd seen a demonstration of uh, a vertical projection. You know, we we have oh, yeah, yeah. of course we're so yeah, used to was, them. Yeah. yeah, but this was vertical, which was being looked at for basically for films which do their work only for release on the mobile. Oh, yeah. Okay. And a lot of work is going on. So you know, these innovations will keep coming. And we've got to decide what we're going to do. And what's next for you? What is the next big thing that you're working on? Nothing at the moment. I I do want to do a web series. It's uh, something I've not done. I'd love to do a web series. Um, I have two different stories in that. They're both women-oriented. One, of course, involves uh, uh, nine different women. Wow. In, okay. nine different, in nine different stories. All right. It's like an anthology. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one is one woman. And it's her story. So... Uh, I'm just looking at that, but what is in my heart right now is a love story, the old formula, a new boy, a new girl, taming of the shoe, parents, a problem between the lovers, may not be parents, could be anything. They, they meet, they hate each other, they meet, 
they fall in love there's the opposition and in the end they come together and everything is hunky dory and like this the, the story fun. that's told time and time again but we never I, get bored I, but nobody <laughs> done it recently yeah. yeah we love it we love it because I we think, finally I want to feel good i would um, love to do that kind of thing and uh, and where do you get your inspiration from 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 anything inspiration come from anything <clears throat> you know you could get inspired by uh, walking on the road and seeing something on the road there it doesn't necessarily have to be from a or b or c uh, our rats have needed uh, ram dri ganga mahi uh, he went to delhi for a wedding where ravindra jain was performing at the wedding the okay. wedding singer and he sang a song a raga which was there in uh, ram singh when he heard the song he went up to ravindra jain and said this is a thousand rupees this is for the story of my next film oh, i'm wow. making it on this song so it evolved from that song so that's you know the inspiration can come from anywhere now any closing thoughts as we end for today anything else that you'd like for us to know about raj kapoor you know i i i would really hope people would uh, would see his films like i put this reaction not because i want to sell my book but um, a lot of people who read the book have said we he visited us the films you know after the book because now we see the films in a different light we now you see how the inspiration came what he did why he shot in a particular manner you know that's i think the great thing in fact i i hope this turns into an ott uh, the whole book right. that'll be amazing book. and tell us that one film that we should all watch as we close for today of rat kapoor yes uh, and yours also <laughs> your favorite your own film my own film my favorite film is dakat okay it's, a, okay. it's my favorite film uh, rat kapoor does a whole lot of films which i would no one one that we all need to watch Supreme Room. So oh, thank you. Supreme Room. So that's the one I'm going to be watching tonight. Right. So thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> thank yeah. you.